Today I'm going to show you how to emulate sunlight, specifically that rich golden light coming through a window at the end of the day. I'm going to show you how to do so with the Westcott Optical Spot. Lindsay Adler here and sometimes when I'm in the studio I don't want it to look like studio light instead I want to emulate natural light maybe I'm trying to create the look of an overcast day or perhaps sunlight and in this case I want to have a look of that rich golden sunlight that comes through a window at the end of the day and thankfully I have the modifier that is going to do the trick I actually teamed up with Westcott to create the optical spot now this category of modifier, uh, it has a couple different names. You might hear optical spot, optical snoot, spot projector, a bunch of different names. But fundamentally what it is, is it has a lens on the end of the modifier. And then you can put a shape in between the light and the lens and it will then cast that shape or that texture of light onto the subject. Now, when you put something in between the light and the lens, that is called a gobo. It stands for a go-between. And so here are two that I use very commonly and actually come in the Westcott Optical Spot kit. So I have a couple different kits uh, and these are two of the options for gobos. So I have one that looks like the dramatic shape of a window and the other that looks like uh, leaves. So you can create a dappled lighting effect or in this case, what we're going to use, the light coming in through a window. So those are some of the characteristics in general of an optical spot, but I wanted to talk a little bit specifically about the one that I designed with Westcott. Now, one of the features that I think is really great is the fact that you can swap out the mount. So for example, if you have a constant light with a Bowens mount or you have a pro photo strobe, you can buy different mounts, but not have to buy multiple modifiers. So in other words, most of the constant lights are studio strobes that you probably own. Well, this modifier is going to work. Now, the other thing which you're actually going to see in the demonstration for this image is the fact that this lens can be changed. Now, this is the kit lens, and the reason we chose this lens is because it is super sharp, it is really, really bright, uh, and it has no chromatic aberrations. Okay, but it is a very tight lens. I designed it so that I could create just the smallest slice of light on the face. In fact, if I wanna create a highlight just on the subject's pupil, I can do that with this lens. However, in this scene, I wanna make it look like the window is large and the light is coming through this large window. And so this is going to be a little bit too tight. So this modifier allows you to attach any EF mount lens. Now an EF lens mount is the most common lens mount in the world. There's the most lenses that are EF mount and they could be Canon lenses, it could be Sigma, Tamron, and you could get an adapter for the lenses you already have. And so in this scene, although the kit lens is super sharp, I'm actually going to switch over to a Canon EF 24 to 70 2.8 lens. And that's going to give me the wider spread of light that I need. Now that we talked about this fantastic modifier, I wanna talk a little bit about this particular setup and the gear that I'm going to be using. So first of all, I'm gonna be shooting with the Canon R5 and the Canon RF 24 to 105 on that camera. This is my go-to lens camera setup, and I'm going to be shooting at 4.0. The reason I wanna shoot at just a little bit of a wider aperture is I wanna make sure that there's a little bit of depth in the scene. I feel like to give that look of natural light, it would be good to have the background just a tiny bit out of focus. It is also good to be able to shoot at a little bit wider aperture so that I don't have to have the power of my strobe up so high. Now, I'm going to be shooting in this scene with two Profoto D2s. First of all, I will have my main light, and that is what has the optical spot. So let's begin with just the main light. I place it off to the left-hand side of the frame, and that's because I wanna have that light raking across the scene. I'm going to add that window gobo, and I wanted to create kind of a feeling of atmosphere and a little bit of drama. And that's why I've had it off to the side so it creates more shadows. All right, so let's get a shot of just that main light. Good, that's perfect. All right, so we have our first light, and you can see that off to the side, it's giving that look of light coming in through a window. However, as I look at the shot, I think that the shadows are too dark. I think it's too dark for two reasons. First of all, if this were actually natural light, actually window light coming into a space, it would probably stream in, bounce around, bounce off the walls and the ceiling and the floors, and fill in those shadows. So first of all, I think it would be more realistic to have a little bit of fill. And then the other reason is the fact that I like the dress, I like the background, and I think 
the darkness of the shadows, you're, you're losing a little bit of the depth and interest. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a large umbrella with diffusion straight onto the scene. And what that does is it gives me a really large, broad soft light that it just kind of lifts up the shadows. And the reason I like this, and I like this as a strobe instead of, for example, using a V flat or a reflector is because I can control the power. So I can turn the power up if I want more fill and down if I want less. In a setup like this, adding a V flat to the opposite side or something to bounce light probably wouldn't be as effective because I have added that gobo. So there isn't as much light to bounce. All right, so let's add in our second strobe. Now, if you really wanna sell the look of sunset light, then you need to do a little bit in post-processing. And I'm going to do so here in Capture One, but you could also do this in Lightroom. Fundamentally, what I'm going to do is a little bit of color grading to warm up the shot. So I am going to increase the warmth of my image. So i am basically just warmed up the white balance a little bit. You can see how it's already looking more like sunset. Then what I'm going to do is if it looks just a little bit too vibrant, I'm going to pull out the saturation and so it'll still look warm, but not quite as orange. And then lastly, what I'm going to do is specifically add a little bit more yellow to the highlights. And so there's a place to do this in Lightroom and a place to do this in Capture One. But basically I can go over to color balance here, go to highlights and then drag a little bit more yellow into those highlight areas. So let me show you the before and after. This is after and this is before. So I believe that it's giving you a little bit more of that sunset feel. Now I'm personally going to do a little bit more to my color grading, playing around with clarity and contrast, but fundamentally those are the most important things if you wanna sell that natural sunset look. shots we have something that believably looks like sunlight coming through a window but it has a little bit more style and of course a little bit more control so the key ingredients that you need to have of course is the optical spot with some sort of gobo and you need to remember that color grading makes this even more believable that little bit of extra warmth really sells the sunset vibe now if you want to check out the gear that I used in this video be sure to check out the links in the description below. And don't forget to try out the Westcott Optical Spot because of course I put my heart and soul into the designing of this modifier. Now speaking of, if you like this scene, you wanna be able to try it or recreate it yourself, you can click on a link below that is actually a lighting recipe guide that shows you all of the information you need to recreate this look. So I have the distance of the light, the power of the light, the camera setting, all of that so you can try it on your own at home. And in fact, I regularly create lighting recipe guides and I actually have one specifically for the optical spot. So if you pick up one of these modifiers, you're going to want to check that one out as well. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you wanna see more like this and see more of how I creatively use the optical spot, be sure to like and subscribe. See you next time.